Let me say hello, I'm Toby. I'm a researcher at the University of Hamburg in the northern part of Germany. Uh, my other hat that I'm wearing uh, is a GNOME hat, so I, uh, I'm also active in the GNOME project, and within the GNOME project I'm trying to, uh, well, increase the privacy and security aspects of, you know, your computing. And today I'm here, or in this slot, I'm here to present uh, research that we've conducted in our lab in Hamburg. <laughs> So good to have experts here. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So what was the fix? Just push the button or? Yes. Good. Perfect. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Probably with the right tension on the button. You know. <laughs> right, this is, uh, this is the computer stuff. Actually, I, was, uh, I, I tried to push this new line of view research, with this, which is uh, theological, research, theological computer science, because, you know, in... With computing, everything is non-deterministic, and you need to sacrifice childs and uh, have demons and everything. So, but uh, that's for another talk. So, um, um, as I said, um, I, I have a few hats. Uh, one is this research hat from my university. The other is uh, my GNOME hat. And today, or in this very slot, I want to talk about some uh, well research we've done in what we call core internet protocols regarding well tracking users' privacy aspects um, in these protocols. And um, I have to name my colleagues. Um, I will refer to a few papers that we've uh, written and published. Uh, so if you want to know more about like, several uh, graphs or several uh, strategies that I will present, I will have the pointers in the, in the slides. So tracking um, in internet protocols, in order to understand what the, what the issue is, what the scenario is, uh, let me ask you to briefly think about what happens if you, you know, type a, some address in your, in your browser and hit enter. And then, you know, the next few uh, milliseconds or seconds, what happens? And now we could do that interactively as a quiz and so on, but we don't have so much time, so I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> we have um, uh, many round trips back and forth, and it starts with the DNS, and then eventually you, you, know, you have the IP address, then you open a TCP connection, and then you uh, send your TLS request because, you know, we want to uh, push uh, encrypted communication forward. And eventually, um, here down, down below, you have your payload. This is what you, what you actually want to send to the other party. The stuff before is the overhead involved in well, connecting to that web server in this case. Arguably, bandwidth is not so much of an issue these days. I mean, of course, uh, well, you could always want more, and you know, you're never satisfied with the amount of bandwidth you have. But arguably, latency is much more important these days than bandwidth. And let's just make that as an assumption, right? If an academic doesn't have anything, any data to back things up, we just assume that it's the case. And we just assume, you know, that latency is an issue. So people want to reduce the number of round trips here, the number of times back and forth. And, well, uh, thinking that this, well, makes the application more snappy and, you know, uh, users are more happy when they have snappy websites. And, in fact, there is a, I think it was... Uh, the motivation, like the paper that, that introduced um, Quick, when, when Google introduced Quick, I think they, they conducted research in their, uh, on their YouTube platform. And I remember something like uh, Google claiming having, and now I make a number up, 30% more revenue when they have uh, clients connecting via Quick, because then people are less likely to just uh, you know, pre prematurely abort the connection and not watch the video and the advertisement. So maybe it's not 30%, maybe it's 13 but even then, you know, saving one or two round trips does have an impact on, well, uh, people like Google or entities like Google when they terminate loads of connections. Then, well, saving a few round trips is good. Anyway, so this is uh, the standard connection establishment as of today. And what do people do to um, reduce the number of round trips? People do things like this. So there's a few mechanisms. One is TCP fast open. There's a TLS session resumption, which may be more, which you may be fam more familiar with. And um, then there's Quick, which will be the new, uh, or will be the base for the HTTP3 uh, protocol. So these are um, mechanisms to reduce the round trips. And um, we had a look at the privacy properties in these protocols because, you know, maybe sure Google is interested in making your connection faster, giving you a more pleasant experience while browsing the videos. But maybe, just maybe, 
It's a hidden tracking mechanism, you know, that nobody thought of, and it's the grand evil plan, and now everything comes together, and then, you know, they know everything. So we had a look, but uh, before discussing these in more detail, let's have a look at those. This is quick, and um, we, don't really, we don't really need to understand each and every line item there. What we will see is that there is a connection establishment made by the client, and then at the end of the day, we get, uh, like, some token from the, from the server, which we can then, in our subsequent request, use here. So um, this is the initial connection establishment. This is the sort of resumption when you come back later. Then you, know, you save one round trip and you do that because you, you share state with the server. You have uh, established this, um, you know, this, uh, this state, which is encoded in this well, cookie or token, whatever you want to call it. And you, eventually you send it back so that the server will know who you were or who you are and can then link your state. So this is some, I mean, it's a very brief uh, overview of a quick, right? If, uh, uh, it's, of course, uh, there's many more aspects to this, but, uh, but this is the, the core aspect that we were interested in. Uh, TCP fast open works similarly. It's, um, in TCP, you know there's this three-way handshake, right? We send our sin, and then we get the response back, and then we, again, send the ACK, and modern, like, systems, they only... Uh, push the payload with this third packet there with the ACK. There's, interestingly enough, there's nothing in the, there's nothing preventing you from already sending your payload in the initial SYN, but it turns out in real life people are bad and on the internet people are especially bad, so the, uh, the servers don't, they don't hold state for your initial SYN. In fact, you know, uh, servers are so afraid of keeping state that they don't even uh, want to, uh, to hold the state of your uh, connection ID or TCP ID, and instead uh, tend to use something like syn cookies, which you know is a uh, mitigation for a for a DOS attack, so that the server does not need does not need to maintain even these few uh, bytes of TCP session ID. They would be even more afraid of of uh, keeping 1,500 bytes of payload in your from your initial uh, TCP uh, syn. Having said that. Uh, Facebook thought it'd be clever if we, found, if we still found a mechanism to send payload in our, very, uh, in, in our initial packet. So how does that work? Facebook thought it'd be reasonable that if you established a connection once, this is, this is regular TCP, this is fast open, if you uh, established a connection once, then you're deemed good enough to come back a second time with the payload already in the first packet. Assuming that if you are a botnet or whatever, then you can possibly not establish a full connection, and then you know it's it's a trade-off they made. They say if you came once and you've had established a connection once, then we trust you that you're good enough that you can come back a second time, and uh, we're happy to then accept your payload in the first packet. So how does that work? You may see here is an addition compared to this is regular TCP. You see the sin and the ACK, and you see here is the cookie. And the cookie is an opaque uh, blob. It's a few bytes, uh, I think something between 8 and 16 bytes that the server sends you. And then you can see here in the, uh, in the fast open case, we not only send our SYN flag, we also send these few bytes back to the server. And the server then, uh, well, checks that the cookie matches its expectations and then accepts your, your data that you fear that you've uh, pushed here. Here's the payload that we want to send. And, um, well, there's a few technical details such that this cookie, of course, does not have to make the server maintain state because that's what we were afraid of, right? So what does uh, this mechanism do? That's probably the, arguably the, the clever part of it. They, it's a Mac over the metadata. And in the case of Linux, it's the Mac over the uh, source IP address and the target IP address. Maybe even the ports, I, I forgot. And then the server, when you come back, the server just needs to, to recompute the Mac of the metadata and see whether it uh, matches the cookie. And in that case, well, you're good enough. All right, so this is fast open. And the, uh, the attentive reader may already see some problems with these schemes regarding, uh, well, tracking and so on. But we come back to that later. Let's first talk about session resumption. Uh, the idea is very similar. You establish a connection once and then you ought to be good enough to come back, 
In the case of TLS, it's a bit more complicated because we have negotiated encryption keys, right? And um, there is a few mechanisms, well, actually two main ones with NTLS 1.2, and then there's uh, pre-shared keys in TLS 1.3, uh, that allow you to tell the server that you've been here before, you've had a connection before, I, I am the client, I've had a connection with you before, here's my state. Please, server, let's reuse that state. Is that okay with you? That's roughly how session tickets work. There's um, these two mechanisms. Session tickets is, uh, let's start with the session ID one. Uh, everybody remembers um, the TCP fast open cookie I've had before that was only like a few bytes, right? Only sort of, an, if, if you want to uh, find an abstraction, it's only your ID, your, your number of, you know, your ID, your running number of connections that you've established. So that, and then the server could look, up, look it up in a database. This is what session IDs are. So you get uh, 16 bytes or so that identify you and then the server has to pull the state from somewhere, like from a database or so, and then reuse that state. Turned out servers are lazy, they don't want to maintain the state, so they serialize all the, all the state of the TLS connection in a relatively large, what they call ticket. And then the server, uh, the client, sends this ticket back each and every time it wants to connect, uh, to, well, trying to coerce the server into deserializing the state and then, well, taking it from there and uh, resuming the, the connection. Uh, that works well. And with the TLS 1.3, everybody ought to use it. These tickets are even encrypted. That was not the case before. So um, that's good. Uh, how does that work? It's, this is TLS 1.2. We have our client hello. We have the server hello. And then eventually uh, the server, well, we indicate that we have support for session tickets, that we want one. And then we eventually get this session ticket. And when we uh, reestablish the connection, we send this, uh, the session ticket back in our client hello. So we tell the server, here's my ticket that you've given me before. Would you please reuse that state? And then we can save the uh, relatively expensive negotiation of a shared key. So that's great. That's a good mechanism. And um, if you've, uh, well, listened carefully and if you have the attacker mindset, then you notice the problems, which are that, well, you get the state from the server and the server needs to somehow, well, reuse the state from before, so there's nothing preventing the server from linking these requests, right? There's the server, uh, by definition, the server needs to know who you were before in order to reuse these, this keying material uh, that you've established before. And in the case of, well, TLS, it's the session ticket, obviously, could be the session ID too, but uh, it's not that, that prevalent. And the TCP fast open case, we have this cookie. Do you remember we had this uh, eight bytes that we get from the server? And it turns out that if you send it back to the server, then, well, surprise, surprise, the server learns who you were. Even worse, the, a network-based attacker, a passive attacker, like me now when I'm snooping all your wireless connections, I can uh, see what token you receive from the server, and then I can see you later when you send this token back. And at least in the, in the TCP case and in the TLS 1.2 case, because the, these tokens are... Uh, sent in as plain text. Oh, and similar with, the, with this quick token that I've uh, mentioned before. So that's a problem, right? Because now we have, um, you know, especially in the TLS case, because we wanted to, to use TLS in the first place to protect our privacy. And now what happened? Now we're leaking not only to the, to the server, like who we were, which may be fair enough, right? If you're connecting to Facebook, it's, you know, maybe you're not so much concerned that Facebook learns who you were. But even worse, your network-based attacker can now re-identify you based on this privacy-preserving protocol that you're trying to use, which is TLS. And it's a complicated problem because we, we have this inherent conflict of what we're trying to achieve in terms of performance with what we're trying to achieve in terms of privacy. You could say now, well, you know, I don't use any of these mechanisms and then I'm good. And you're right. You could do that. You could simply not use TLS resumption. In fairness, though, you'd have to configure all your libraries to not do that because they tend to give you the advantage of like more, uh, uh, a quicker connection establishment. But you could do that. You could opt out. And um, what we ought to try, though, is to make it harder, to, to make these simplest attacks harder, to these, these tracking uh, attacks, if you want to call, it, call them that, right? This, that the passive network attacker is not able to link 
your requests, uh, that would, would be already a good step, right? Then, uh, well, we would uh, save some of our privacy um, when we send these cookies or tokens back to the server. So how prevalent is that? How much of a problem is that really, this uh, resumption case? This is Alexa top million, I think. Yeah, one million. It's this proprietary uh, top list of website made by uh, Amazon. And um, what we can see here is that only 4% of the internet, let's call it the internet, is uh, not using any form of session resumption. Conversely, the rest does. We can uh, say that the internet uses uh, TLS session resumption, well, not only to make your experience better, but also to save some CPU cycles and round trips, as we've learned before. So potentially, these are all tracking you through like the mechanism we've seen before. And what does that even mean to track? Like, how big of an issue is this tracking problem, say? We've measured how, for how long uh, servers advertise that they can track you. This is my negative interpretation. Their interpretation is for how long this key is valid now. And uh, we have also measured uh, how long clients actually reuse this token, like this, uh, well, this tracking cookie, if you want to call it that. So turns out that self-advertised um, tracking time is roughly 24 hours. There's a few exceptions. I think Google and Facebook were, like, they had long tracking periods. And um, there is, uh, uh, well, when, when you reconnect, then you get a cut of, uh, here at about 1,000 minutes or so when, when clients uh, tend to not send it back for whatever reason. Um, by investigating the clients more closely, we uh, see this behavior, which is that, well, uh, clients keep the session ID, which is this relatively short token for this long, and the session ticket, which is this rather large, uh, well, state for that long, and we see uh, things like uh, uh, anything from 30 minutes to a day, or a yeah, day is the longest. And then the question is, can we extend this period? You know, we, we have clients, because clients are not necessarily dumb. They, they know it's a problem you know, that you can be tracked. So clients try to prevent you from being tracked. So what do they do? Well, they uh, let the, this token time out. And in this case, they let the token time out in 30 minutes, or here in one day. And then the question is, could we, as a smart attacker, somehow prolong this period? You know, could we somehow track users for longer than that? And um, yes, it's possible. If we think of an attacker like this, uh, like a third party, you know, your uh, uh, Google AdSense or whatever, and you have a website A and a website B, and A being, let's say, Facebook, and B being, say, eBay, and both include content from this third party, say, Google AdWords or whatever it is. And then, because you're browsing website A, you're establishing a connection to Google, Google gives you their, uh, their session ticket. This is TLS 1.3 now, by the way. I thought I'd, I'd throw some more modern stuff in. This is a TLS 1.3 handshake. And um, then when you connect to website B, to eBay, you also establish a connection to Google. And because you're reusing your session ticket, or in TLS 1.3, it's the key share, uh, then Google can link your two requests together. And again, your browser might extend the period in which this token is valid. And um, this is a measurement of how long you can actually track users using this method. It's um, based on data we have acquired of real browsing behavior. And uh, we see that the, uh, this is the, the reconnection time of when users reconnect to a website for whatever reason, not necessarily directly, but also indirectly. And we've measured that you can uh, uh, track users for like very long times. You find details in this uh, paper there. It's, um, yeah, it's um, quite interesting research. So what do we do to um, like prevent this? Well, how about we do not send plain text tokens in the first place? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would be so good to have more encryption on the link layer. Yeah, woo, everybody uh, should be in favor of that. And yeah, how about we um, encrypt these tokens using, well, some mechanism that we don't have yet. In fact, we, this uh, quick token is not yet encrypted. How about we just encrypt that? The fast open cookie is not encrypted yet. How about we encrypt that? And in TLS, it's easy though, though because TLS 1.3 en encrypts our session ticket. That's good. 
so um, let's not focus on this one because we've talked a bit about uh, quick. Let's talk about the fast open case. Um, in fast open, we have the problem that we only we are on the TCP layer, and TCP has no encryption yet. And we, at the same time, require to not incur state on the server side because it ought to be cheap for the server. So our, our options here are limited. What we came up with is to combine these two layers, that is the TLS layer and the TCP layer, to send the token over the encrypted channel. Yeah, that's the idea. And it, looks, it then looks like this. You have your TCP connection establishment. You send your TLS client hello, and you get this cookie, this TCP fast open cookie, back in this encrypted channel. And then you have the problem of feeding it back to Linux, because, well, you, somehow Linux needs to know about this cookie. So we introduced the two new, two new uh, sock opts. These are socket options we needed to introduce to make this happen. It's, uh, well, some uh, sock opt to get and set the cookie on a socket, and on the server side, we need to actually generate this cookie in order to, you know, for the client to, uh, to connect back. And this is the patch. It's like 200 lines, more or less. So it's easy enough to get into Linux. It's not terribly complicated to bring more privacy to these protocols. On the TLS side, we've used both SSL. They have a booth here also, I think, in, in H. Uh, good guys. I can highly recommend uh, talking to those people. They're very nice. And um, Wolf SSL, we've patched such that the cookie comes over TLS, and then we have this patch of also roughly 200 lines, and it's a minimal overhead. We have some more ideas how to, well, further increase performance and privacy uh, of these protocols by combining these layers, and the core ideas are to somehow prefetch data and send them over an encrypted link, and there is some more applications we could, well, or some more protocols we could treat that way. My time is up, I was told. Um, if you have any comments, questions, whatever, you're very welcome to contact me, the email or personally. And I don't know whether we have time for questions. I'm fearing not. But I will stick around. Thank you very much. <laughs>